getting into vinyl doesn't have necessarily have to be very expensive. You can get in quite cheaply actually, um, with decent turntables and decent arms and very inexpensive cartridges. But if you want to keep your vinyl tip-top condition, no matter what level you're at, a few accessories uh, will really help. And if you keep your vinyl in tip-top shape and your turntable and your cartridge, you'll be surprised about the kind of performance you can get out of these quite reasonable turntables. So what I thought I'd give you today is a little tour around my accessories box. Uh, there's quite a few things in here, and uh, I'll link some of the things below. And uh, we'll see how I keep uh, my two turntables uh, in tip-top condition and uh, my 25-cent garage finds. Actually, that's now $5 garage finds. 25-cent records are a thing of the past. And um, if you're interested, uh, you can find them on the link below. Uh, most of these things, if you do a search, you can find them at Amazon for quite inexpensive. Okay, so here we go. So I've got product showcase on this fancy schmancy Sony camera, so hopefully they'll uh, focus and you can get an idea what what's going on. Let's start with something pretty basic, a record brush. Everybody needs a record brush, and you can get them cheapest chips on Amazon. I think there's a new one. I forget the the manufacturer makes it. Audio Quest, it could be Clear Audio. There's something with a, kind of a grounding bar in there that, that helps. But this is a uh, much more refined one. This is by Raymar of Berlin. Again, it's, there we go. And you see the wood, the walnut, the metal surround, which is, is the brush. And inside is um, a stylus brush. And there's the little magnets. Listen to this. Just closes with a very satisfying click. Now, you don't need this. But it is nice to have. If you if you want to get a, the Rolls Royce of record brushes, this is the one, Raymar of Berlin. If your turntable is not level, no matter how good, let's see, here we go. If your turntable is not level, no matter how good, it's not going to work well. It's going to sound off. So I have several uh, spirit levels. This one, which I keep on top of my Bergman. This little teeny tiny one, so you can see that. Uh, I'll leave on the Pure Fidelity, you can see that. And I think I've got another one in here. <clears throat> Let's have a look. This is not going to work, it keeps sliding. Okay, and then there's this one, just your basic Stanley with all the different sides. Some people think you should keep your stylus clean with liquids. Some people think you should uh, give it a quick brush once in a while. Some have gels. Um, people like Lynn say, and Rega say, don't use anything. The, uh, the movement of the cartridge in the record will get all the fluff off. Uh, or just a quick blow might help. Um, so here we go. This is the one that I use, and I use it infrequently. Uh, this is a brush by, I don't think I've got the, the, it's just your standard brush, you can see it, and then like that. But I am convinced of this stuff. Audiophilia recommended. This is the Disc Doctor Stylus Cleaner. It's not cheap, lasts forever. I use about two or three drops, and uh, I use about once a week on both styluses. I have, um, a Facemation PP2000, retails about $7,000. That's on my Bergman. And I have a Miyajima uh, Labs Infinity. And that's a gorgeous uh, mono cartridge from Japan, about $3,750 US. Let's continue now. <clears throat> Setup. When you're setting up, you must, must, uh, setting up your cartridge, I should say, you must use a uh, scale cartridge. This is a cartridge digital scale. This is not cheap. It's by Autophon. It's an Autophon DS1. Again, Amazon special. But I think it's about 100 bucks. But boy, it's really, really nice. I think I've got it loose in there somewhere else. I'll show you in a second. But that's the, the box it comes in. It's very nice. It's, uh, it calibrates and it's, uh, the battery lasts forever. And one of my most essential tools for balancing the the, uh, uh, the tracking of my cartridges. If you uh, follow Audiophilia 
carefully, you'll know that uh, Michael Johnson just did a review of the DeGritta uh, ultrasonic record cleaner, which he absolutely adored. Said he was playing records that uh, he thought previously were damaged after using a vacuum cleaner, vacuum record cleaner, but uh, he says, no, no damage. It was just dirt really deeply lodged in. So he's loving that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't have um, one of those, but I do have a VPI 16.5, which is, uh, I'll just interject it here. And it's, uh, it's in my closet in my music room. And uh, yeah, it, it does perfectly well. I don't think it's an ultra, I don't think it's a degrader, but it's also about um, one third the price. So for now, I use that, and I use, when I first got the machine, I got the VPI cleaner that came with it, which is excellent. But you can do a DIY cleaner. Of course, your mileage, my, your mileage may vary, so <laughs> this is what, just what I use. Um, I mix my own of distilled water and 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol and a few uh, drops of uh, surfactant, which looks like... This photo flow by uh, Kodak, and uh, that bottle would last about 200 lifetimes because you only need a few drops, which I put in with a very simple syringe. So, a few about four drops or five drops into a bottle that size, and literally for a gallon jug. I use I, the distilled water, and then I, I uh, take out about uh, get one one bottle of uh, you know regular bottle of isopropyl alcohol, throw that in, dump some of the distilled water out, throw that in, and then throw in some surfactant. That's the uh, photo flow, and give it a shake, and that lasts for a long time. So this is what I'm using. That's the liquid that I'm using right now. I shake it up. You see how the surfactant works? See how it makes a little bit, makes bubbles, and makes the uh, liquid flow on top of the record a little bit easier. I think that's it. Don't take my word for it. So let's continue with, uh, this is the brush that I use with my VPI cleaner on my VVI VPI 16.5. Just a hard, I guess it's acrylic brush, and you give it a good scrub once the liquid is on there. On the turntable, on the... Um, 16.5 turntable, and then give it a vacuum. It does a good job. Now I'd like to talk about speed. That's been a bit of a problem for me <clears throat> in the last little while. And I'll talk to you about that in a second. Uh, I use two things to check my speed. I check it monthly. First one is a very simple app called, let's see if we can get this in here, called RPM Pro. And it's from iOS, I think. I'm not sure if Android has have it as well. But it's it's very good. It it's good for a quick check. And if it's at 33.33, it's in the, it go, this center section goes in the green. If it's not, it goes in the red or whatever the color is, but it's not good. And I've seen that a little too often um, in the last little while. But I think I've got those speed things solved, and this helps. Okay, so sorry about the Twitter, the Twitter notification there. This is not cheap, but it's made by Olnik Audio. The, the genius is at Olnik Audio. This is called the Speednik. You put this on the turntable. That's a nice weight. You can see the, the indentations. Uh, you check your speed, 78, 45, or 33. And then you turn it on. I'm not sure if you can see this, but you can see a little, where are we here? There we go. I'm oh, sorry about the blind you guys. Sorry about that. But that flashes down on this, on these numbers. On these, uh, I should say hash, hashes. And if they're stable and solid and not moving, you're the right speed. This thing is foolproof. It's not cheap. You can get it from Olnik. I think it's about 300 bucks, but it's very, very good. But you can get by with that. I think it's a four or $5 app on, um, on uh, iOS or Android. 
Next up, just dipping in here. Oh, this is the um, the Ansys Record Stabilizer box. You can see it there. Check out my review at Audiophilia. Notice it's called a stabilizer. It is not a puck or a clamp or a weight. It's made out of, um, you saw it at the beginning, uh, rotating on the top of my Bergman. It's an exquisitely made uh, device made out of titanium two with zirconium and put in a particle, particle accelerator. It's a, it's a magical, magical device. It is incredibly expensive at 6,000 euros. So this is not for beginners. This is not for, not for people dipping their toes in. But I wanted to show you what, I've, what I'm very, very fortunate to be able to use here at Audiophilia. Sometimes uh, a little dab of oil will do you, as they say. And this is Singer uh, sewing machine oil. And let's see, it's, uh, it doesn't say the exact, uh, but it's, it, this is the stuff that you should be putting in your um, uh, spindle down in the bearing if it needs it. You don't need much, I mean a little tiny drop. But if you run out, you can just get the stuff from Singer. I'll go slowly down, then you can see what it's called. Anything on the back? Well, it's English, there you go. <laughs> that might help for our English fans. And there's the, uh, there's the skew number, so there you go. I have quite a few boxes from the Phasmations uh, cartridges and the uh, Miyajima, which I've talked about. My beloved Phasmation PP2000 is very expensive, but it's an incredibly good cartridge. You can read my review or you can read Michael Fremer's review at Stereophile. We both adored it. Mine was first. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> this is the Olnik um, Amber. This is a beautiful cartridge. You can see the, the way it gives you a spirit level. Let's take it out and show you. Um, this is about 5,600 or something. It's stiff in there. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's really in there. That's, how are we doing here? Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So it comes in this beautiful... Let's see, with uh, laser etching and... You can see the cartridge there. It's securely placed. The new ones come with a stylus guard. This one didn't, which was my was my only complaint, because this is a superb cartridge. Better, worse than the phase mission, just different. A different. Um, again, phase mission is about seven. This is about fifty nine hundred, I think. I think after I did the review, the prices went up. Surprise, surprise. But it was a, a, a rave review because it's a wonderful piece by um, Olnick. What else have we got in here? Oh, this is just my extra, just to show you MBL, the world's greatest remote control. I'm, I have a real thing for remote controls. I think too many manufacturers send you this beautiful device with the world's worst remote control, even worse, those plastic, fantastic pieces of junk, or an Apple remote. I'm an Apple fanboy. The remote is not one of their stellar products. So MBL send uh, that remote with each of their products. They're just, it's incredible. Beautifully made, so functional, and looks gorgeous in your music room. Even Rego uses a plastic, and name, use plastic remotes, but they're so beautifully designed with high quality plastics. You don't have to send a, a, you know, a $500 metal remote with your product, but you should send a good quality remote. What else we got here? Okay. So this was a puck. That's called, a, that's a puck with a rubber surround. That's sent with the, the Bergman. And that is a very beautiful device. It just holds the record on because it has a kind of slippery acetate, um, uh, top on top of the aluminum platter. It's very good and certainly serviceable and looks the part. You don't need a 6,000 euro st stabilizer, but does the stabilizer sound better? Yes, a lot better.
little few Allen keys for changing the uh, cartridges. This is a very simple device, how you balance the level on my arm, on the, uh, the air bearing arm on the uh, Magna, the Bergman Magna, you just put that on and you balance it so it stays stable. It's the most simple way of making sure your arm's straight and, and level and balanced. And uh, it's simple, a little bit of plastic. Boy, does that work beautifully. Another cartridge here. This is uh, from my friend John Stratton at Pure Fidelity. This is his um, uh, Stratos cartridge, is the imp information. This This is a very fine cartridge for about, I think it's about... 1900 US or 2000 US, but that's, that's really good. I heard another one the other day, uh, gold ring ethos cartridge, almost as good, but, uh, this one's just about a hundred dollars more, I think US, but you should, if you're in the market for a really good, uh, moving coil, low output cartridge around two grand, that's your, here's your guy, pure fidelity in Vancouver. This is the very important Audifon device I was telling you about. Cartridge digital scale, and you just press it on and place it on the turntable and you put the stylus on there and it weighs it and it's done. It's really good. It's incredibly accurate. And, uh, but it's about a hundred bucks, maybe 120 bucks. It's got the magical Audifon name on it. So they're gonna charge it a little bit more. What else I got on here? Oh. This is something silly. <laughs> An MBL paperweight that looks look very much like my MBL products that are very kindly on long-term loan from my friends at MBL North America. It's the kind of stuff they produce for their, their favorite reviewers. No, I'm just kidding. But they are wonderful people and their products are incredible. And finally, I think we're getting close to the end. A little, few little bits of oil and some extra belts for my Pure Fidelity. And there's some other, uh, what do they call them? Um, uh, things to uh, do azimuth and overhang. The autophon, I should, is the autophon, where is it? I should show you that. That's really, oh, there it is. I think I've got two of them. This is, this is very inexpensive and very important. Accuracy and sound by Audifon Protractor. Let's get it the right way up for you. Simple card device, you put it on your turntable and then you measure the, depends on the type of arm you have. Good. So that's it. Lots and lots of accessories. Most of them very inexpensive, um, other than the ANSYS stabilizer and the cartridges, all fairly um, inexpensive, especially for what they do. And uh, if you do those things, I, I put a note on my iPhone to remind me every three months to check the arm balance, uh, to check the uh, cartridge weight, uh, the tracking weight, 1.8 is lovely for both cartridges. And uh, make sure the speed is good, that's a biggie. Make sure my the little um, uh, spirit levels on both turntables are bang in spec. And if you do that, I can pretty well assure you you'll up your vinyl game no matter what level you're at. And if you're at the entry level, good on you. Enjoy it and save your pennies until you can move up to the next level. And it's a wonderful, healthy, uh, avocation and uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. Listen, have a wonderful day. Hope you're healthy, safe wherever you are. Have a great uh, day and um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.